Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 3, Episode 12, Thoughts. This episode is called The Inside Man. So, another episode I love. Uh, spoilers for everything MCU leading up to and including this episode. No spoilers for anything MCU that came out after this episode first premiered. So, let's dive right in. So, yeah. Um, at the very start, we see... Grant's body being taken over, and yeah, it got even more overtly venom. Yeah, with the with the tongue and just yeah. And let's see. yeah, and and you know, Lucio sees he cannot use his Medusa vision on the 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 hell beast and the ah um, what's the word yeah I I appreciate this you know yeah he's basically gathering in humans the hell beast is and then we have the um, yeah, yeah, and he does the taking over thing like he also did to Gaiera. So Lance's nickname for the two Inhumans on the team are Shake and Bake, and they help. Which, that is a legitimately, yeah, Shake is Daisy and Bake, because of the high enough intense electricity, that's Lincoln. Yeah, not, not bad. And then we have the yeah the you know they discuss the the thing with you know inhumans being feared and you know Daisy points out humans are dangerous not only inhumans and uh, you know Bobby says but people already know humans they don't know inhumans yet and we fear what we don't understand. I really appreciate that. It's, you know, because cause that really is it. You know, you... Like, there's a lot of people who will let horrible things happen as long as it's someone that they know and trust doing the things. But if they see even a fraction of that from a minority group that they're not comfortable around yet, they're going to see that as way worse. You know, an example is how the tiniest little bit of, like, even just, like, verbal, you know, just, yeah, if, if, um, if a trans person just, like, expresses frustration in a very non-threatening way, Transphobes blow it out of proportion. They, oh, they're they're threatening us. We're being threatened. When it's the transphobes who are literally like using genocidal rhetoric, passing laws that like take away civil rights from trans people. So you know, yeah, I really appreciate. It. Again, this episode has like basically every episode of Agents of Shield so far up to and including this one, that goes into Inhumans as, like, you know, people not, you know, not knowing if they feel comfortable around them and being scared and that sort of thing. Yeah, all of these episodes have only gotten more relevant since they first aired. And <laughs> I like that Lincoln says that the... the Let's see. Yeah, you know, Lincoln spots Talbot, and you know, May is all about you know. Oh, this, it, yeah. I'll I'll do, you know. May says, stay focused. Field work isn't always about rushing in and using your powers. Look for anything out of the ordinary. People with their hands in their pockets, long coats, clothes that don't match the weather, and Lincoln's like, wait, I think I see something suspicious. And May is like, what is it? What do you see? And then Lincoln says, no one would ever intentionally cut their hair like that. <laughs> I think Daisy's 
ugly side is is rubbing off on on Lincoln, which I th I don't think that was the side of her that he hoped to be rubbing up against. And then we have the yeah the I I appreciate you know there's a lot of episodes where May doesn't say very much. This episode, she has a, a pretty good um, amount of lines without it, like, getting to be so much that it just feels like, okay, it's no longer the same character. And... Yeah. Um, Creel shows up, and it turns out after the fight that he was just protecting Talbot and at first I was like could he not have just like talked to them because he's like use your, use your words big fellow but I if he legitimately thinks that he's protecting this guy yeah I guess I can understand I, I might not speak to the people that I just saw seemingly kidnap the guy I'm bodyguarding so yeah you know cuz what what did he see he saw Colson shove Talbot you know he open a car door shove Talbot in close the door lock it and Talbot was clearly not okay with it and then yeah he he thinks that these people are, are kidnapping Talbot because that was something that yeah, you know, he was worried. Talbot already knew that Hydra was was still dangerous. So yeah, still still active. And yeah, it's a it's a really cool fight. Um, the you know he he uses like a tire and is thus immune to to bullets because it was a bulletproof tire. Because it's one of the, you know, it's a, it's a fancy car that's supposed to protect you from, you know, and the, you know, Lincoln's electro electrical attacks also don't put it in him, which, yeah, because it's rubber. So, you know, it, it just bounces off. Of him. Very, very nicely done. I, I love how tactical the use of powers is on this show. And the let's see at first i was a little like would lincoln really just stand there and let creel get like just you know once you see that your powers are not doing the trick like turn and run you know put some distance between you but he doesn't have full training yet so you know the, it is a sort of rookie mistake you know and he's used to his powers taking care of of these problems immediately and then we have the, um, um, yeah, you know, Talbot reveals that he is, you know, Creel is on his side. He's, you know, everywhere I go, he goes, and he even insists there's no way that he'll go to the the symposium if not with Creel. And I love that, like, because when he just says, oh yeah, you know, don't worry, don't worry about Creel, I know, Hydra, before that he had a criminal record, but it took us a long time, but we undid the damage, you know, he's, he's good now. When we then realize that Talbot was working with Gideon, knowing that Gideon is Hydra, we're like, of course, of course he's gonna work with Creel because Creel is still Hydra, but then later, no, he he wasn't lying. He and and that's the thing, like, yeah, it is possible for people to reform. They even bring up, you know, Colson says, I believe people can reform. I don't know about, you know, this is this is a situation where, you know, what if what if it goes wrong? Well, it went very right without Creel they would not have been able to, you know, nobody had, nobody that wasn't Hydra had a gun. And the, you know, yeah, there were no Inhumans. 
Creel was the only person who could have saved the the entire situation. So so very very nicely done. And and yeah, you know, I I don't think I know quite enough about Creel to say for sure, but my theory would be this is the first time anybody's really trusted him. Anybody's been like, you know what? If you do the right thing, we're going to treat you right. And that's you know, there are a number of people who've done bad things. That's really all they need to hear. That they just need someone to to reach out. You know, I consider that a very important part of the progressive cause is to make sure that it's clear to conservatives, you know, we're not trying to hurt you. We are trying to help you. We're going to solve the actual problems. We're not going to help you hate minorities. We're not going to help you hurt people who've done nothing wrong. But we are going to solve the underlying issue so that you don't even feel like hurting anyone. Let's see. For, for those of you where that's possible. Sadly, some have, you know, are... are not going to stop the hate but I yeah so so we get to the the symposium itself and I appreciate that you know Talbot it's it's very in character this is this is just this is Talbot in in the on the show at least I, I don't I haven't read the the comics that he appears in I don't think but yeah you know he's like he, he picks up food takes a bite you know, he's like spitting it out and putting part of the food back on the plate. Just holy crap! And he's like, "I don't trust that guy. He's Russian. I don't know how to pronounce any of your names." And it's like, I love that that joke, one hundred percent bombed. Like I, I don't remember the last time I saw a joke just completely bomb like that because. You know, we get several reaction shots. Nobody thought it was funny. Nobody even, like, smiles. Everyone's just like, I can't believe he actually said that. You know, just, you know. So, you know, they're embodying the audience. And... Let's see. Yeah, I, I appreciate the thing with the, the handshakes. And, you know, they make sure that the, the Colson's... One of Colson's arms is in a sling, which, yeah, you know, you shake people's hands at this sort of thing. They're not gonna shake the hand that's in a sling, so they shake the other hand. He gets the the fingerprints and and so it's very, very clever. Uh, you know, yeah, just such such a great way to cause you can understand why they would think this is you know, the people making that security system are like, who's gonna you know, you can't get into someone's room without the the hand yeah, because it's not even just the fingerprints, is it? It's the entire, like, hand. It's the, so, so, yeah. Anyway, I don't know if it is or not, but it certainly seems very secure, but that's the kind of gadget that can really undo that. Let's see. Congratulations, Talbot. You've narrowed it down to everyone. Let's see. Yeah, not not great a clue. This guy, he he does not have a clue. But yeah, we we realize later, you know, he's the inside man. So, uh, yeah, not really a fan of you know. This is something that I don't know if it was him personally who came up with the idea, but Joss Whedon has a history of transphobic comments and such. So, you know, trying to embarrass a male character. By putting them in something that's supposed to be evocative of a dress, you know, a feminine piece of clothing. <sighs> yeah, really, I could do without that. Let's see. And yeah, Grant, Hell Beast asks for five human beings who are still alive, which already sounds very ominous. And yeah, so so Daisy and, and Lincoln spar and I appreciate like they did a really good job on the physical because like 
yeah, you can sort of tell. Lincoln's getting there. He's not 100% yet. He's not fully trained yet. Daisy is. You know, she's, she carries herself completely differently than, you know, like season one. And, you know, she's like, I need to work out. I, I need to blow off steam because she really wanted to go on this mission. I'm really glad that she didn't. It was a, a great discussion. And then the fact that she hears Lincoln talking to to Fitzsimmons about you know the seeming vaccine is great and you know she points out you need to to be ready for for your test for the cocoon so yeah and someone realized that it would serve multiple purposes if by chance the the two of them ended ended up on the floor with her on top which like cuz cuz that's the thing like some people not everyone but some people find it arousing to be sparring you know and they have been flirting a lot and you know the the yeah daisy just knocked him down which, you know, that's, yeah, some people are really into that, into being able to, to throw around their partner or being thrown around by their partner. She ends up on top of him and, you know, it's very sexually charged. And then Gemma, who evidently excelled at her, let's go with jerk blocking, at the academy because holy crap and she does apologize to be fair and what she you know it is important you know but wow that just <laughs> I guess maybe maybe because she's been having her needs met she forgot how frustrating it could be to to not have anyway but the See. Yeah, really great uh, debate. Yeah, actually, yeah, both, both in the the at the symposium and in the lab, great debates about in humans, and yeah, you know this thing of vaccine, the the, and actually, yeah, it it works. I'm not sure that they knew, let's see, the episode was from 2016, the science was there, and I think there had been some studies that proved it. I don't know if the writer's room for this episode were aware, but the thing they say about the vaccine, that actually does, that's not, like if you, if you, as long as you translate it properly into, like, actual trans issues, yeah, you know, they're, they're saying, you know, no, 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 I'm not saying they'll never transition. I'm saying they have to wait until they're ready. You know, that is, that sounds a lot like the the actual process. You know, if, if it's someone young, you might give them puberty blockers and start them off with social transitioning you know, and yeah, once once they're old enough for actual like surgical procedures to you know gender affirming care, then you know you you talk them through it. You don't rush anything, and yeah, that's actually really you know. I I hope nobody watched this and thought that because I I can see how some people might perceive it. As the the transphobic rhetoric around, you know, oh, they they don't know yet, which is just not true. Like, there, you know, obviously nobody, extremely few people. It is not the consensus would suggest like, oh, you know, if if a really small child is is confident that they're trans, we should immediately like, you know. Prep them, get them to the OR. No, we're just saying 
let them socially transition and if they stick with it then once they're old enough you know then yeah gender affirming medical care can be you know but but yeah i i really appreciate that and you know yeah you can understand why for for daisy this sounds you know essentially as far as i can tell she's basically hearing nobody should be allowed to to transition to to terigenesis transition you know and yeah obviously that is very upsetting for someone for whom it's gone very well and there are some trans people you know it's it, it's a very personal issue for a number of trans people I, I don't know that I've really myself seen any that were like irrational about it which I feel like that's what we're supposed to take that uh, Daisy as being here you know but yeah the, the she did end up agreeing you know saying you know I don't I don't know some something's going on let's see right very very cool when Bobby goes climbing you know because they they had the the glove but that was Lance's so the only way for her to get into King's room is is to climb very very cool and then we have the yeah um she busts into the safe with what I'm pretty sure is the same you know lock picking device that Coulson used at the end of the first Iron Man movie so very nice and yeah uh, they realize it's a setup you know, yeah, Lance realizes that upon seeing Talbot's son in the, you know, in, in the gel. And I do appreciate, you know, Gideon says, you know, if he presses a button, suddenly, you know, the, the gel turns off and they die. That's, you know, he knows that because he helped develop it. Or, he, yeah, he, he knows it because that's something that he wanted to be able to do to Inhumans in case he lost control. And, yeah, really, really, I did not at all guess that Talbot was the inside man. Which is, you know, very good movie. And then we have the... Uh, what did I write? Oh, right. The, the yeah. Um, you know. So so yeah. Lance. You know comes and I, I appreciate. You know, Creel had to hurt him a little. Yeah, technically, you know, he can't. There wasn't really any other way for for him to to deal with it. But again, it makes us think that Creel is is the bad guy. And, and, you know, sadly, a lot of people, a lot of ex-cons, you know, people treat them with suspicion. And I feel like this episode can help inspire more empathy and patience. And, yeah, you know, so, so yeah. Um, Hunter wakes up, guns pointed at his, his head, and he's like, I don't mean to be a buzzkill. Um... Yeah, here we go. I hate to be a buzzkill, but this is a gun-free zone, so I'm gonna have to take that off you. And, you know, right after that, um, May and Bobby take out the the people and their guns. Very, very cool. And... Yeah, and, you know, they're like... Let's see... That... Uh, yeah. The, the exact line, you know, May says, great, Coulson's in trouble, this place is crawling with armed Hydra agents, and we have no weapons. And Lance is like, not strictly true, and brings out the gun and baton, buon appetito. And Bobby says, I love you, and May says, I don't hate you quite as much. <laughs> yeah, she's not, I'm not kissing you, she's not going to go that far. 
and let's see. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Malik lies to the symposium people. And this was the point where I realized there is a very distinct handprint on the chest of the body that used to of the, of the Hell Beast, where Coulson's robot hand crushed the the his his um, I can't believe I'm blanking on the name um, chest. Uh, yeah, the, the bone structure there. Very nicely done. And that must have been a real hassle for the for the makeup department to, to very carefully do that each time. So, yeah, you know, by the end of this episode, maybe they won't have to anymore. And... Yeah, you know... Um, Hellbeast says this is for the greater good. And, you know, notes, yes, they are, they are innocent, but, uh, you know, this is, this is important. You know, it doesn't make him go, oh, innocent, no, Ugh, guys, I meant for you to bring me five alive guilty people. Oh, you know what, I'm, <laughs> I'm real sorry. Uh, there's been a huge misunderstanding. The five of you, you can, you're, you're free to go. Um, I, uh, the, boy, is there egg on my face. No, he's like, yes, they are def they are innocent, and they will, they will be delicious. And <laughs> I have to admit the fact that in the year 2016, we're still playing straight, give me back my son, is pretty wild to me, but... Yeah, I think they said it like three times, so with within fairly short amount of time. So they were having some fun. But that's more than, yeah, they they were aware that it's it's kind of a a joke by now. Not quite a meme, I don't think, but but definitely very hard to take seriously anymore. And yeah, Creel saves. Talbot and Coulson, and we have the great line about, you know, lose control, yeah, really great exchange in, in general. And yeah, we see that Hellbeast has been healed and he's covered in like slime and blood and you see all these ch the the five charred corpses in front of him around him so and that's the kind of thing depending on how the actor feels about the process how the makeup department feel about the process and about the actor that's either very fun or very unpleasant applying that much slime and and such to to an actor and yeah we end on the the so the um the guy um one of the people from the symposium was um yeah went went along with with Gideon and you know they're together on a plane at the end and hunter and bobby are also on that plane so and and you know there's that line about you know we're um when whenever we land something something you know just yeah very very cool really looking forward to seeing what happens next with that and yes so the uh yes i'm to be trivia for this episode edin fessy's name appears on a document who's been captured by the australian threat unit in the comics fessy is a mutant who goes under the code name of manifold a member of nick fury's secret warriors 
The sequence in which Dalton as the inhuman hive possessing Grant Ward is naked and covered in goo is inspired by images of people covered in honey that reminded the showrunners of a birth. Dalton was given two weeks notice to prepare for the scene, particularly to get in the best shape he could. The goo used was made from methyl cellulose. Yeah. Honestly, when I first read Dalton was given two weeks notice, I thought it was like if he decided this was not a show he wanted to be on anymore, if they were going to cover him in goo. And... The screens in the conference room show the title of the conference in, from top to bottom, English, Chinese, Japanese, Afrikaans, and Russian. And that is about what I have to say for this episode. So, next episode, I will cover tomorrow. And... Right, just briefly, um, I, I know that at least some uh, amputees like when a piece of fiction, you know, has an amputee character with, like, some sort of sci-fi, you know, prosthetic. So, I can imagine this, you know, this entire element of the of the show, of Coulson using these hands for, for gadgets and weapons and such, you know, I'd, I'd like to think, I haven't heard for sure, but I could imagine that you know some fans who are who are amputees really really love that so yeah really love when they're able to yeah representation is yeah diversity is our strength representation good representation is good and <laughs> yeah i will close with Talbot and Coulson, right, you know, right before Creel rescues them, you know, Talbot's like, do me a favor and shoot him first. I'd like one moment of peace before I go. And Coulson says, you didn't know he was going to double-cross you. He is Hydra, just saying. <laughs>